I want to do a bit of an update from my first uh, acne diary, which was when I went through a few of my favorite products with you guys and talked about my routine a little bit. So one of the products that I took you guys through in my last video was a microfiber cloth that didn't end up working out so well for me because um, I think I'm just honestly so easily aggravated. Um, and I think also like it has something to do with like how frequently or infrequently I was washing it. Um, if you have a microfiber cloth and don't see like an amazing result, which you really should, because all it requires is water, um, make sure you're washing it in like a soap free sensitive wash. And I would be washing it like a couple of times a week um, at the very least. And then a few things change in my diet. So I was eating peanut butter every day, which was in my protein smoothies. Um, I'm also like high key addicted to it. And um, I just, I didn't know like why I started getting these like, honestly, they were like cysts, like white cysts and primarily around my mouth. And I had a consult with my iridologist who is a naturopath as well. And she asked me if I was having like peanut butter or too much avocado. And I think it just goes to show that um, everything should be in moderation in life. I have switched to almond butter and I have that a few times a week. I don't know whether it was just peanuts specifically, but it definitely was the reason why I was breaking out. It's kind of watch that you're not really like blocking your system up. On that note of moderation, I was having um, a shot of apple cider vinegar a day, either that or a lemon drink. And I just did a few Googles on that as well. God, I sound like a seven year old. I did a few Googles. Um, I researched that a little bit and uh, too much apple cider vinegar in the system is linked to acne or aggravating cystic acne. So just find your balance and don't think because one thing is good for you that you have to do it every single morning because that's when your immune system sort of finds its tipping point and it's trying to send you a message. So listen to your body. My skin was definitely trying to tell me to just like cut back on the lemon and peanuts. So definitely listen out to your body and what's going on on your face is there for a reason. So really be in tune and hyper aware of like what you're having every day. Maybe you're having too much of something. I didn't wear makeup for like five months straight at a time last year. And I thought for a second, it's cause I was with a partner and we had been together for like a year. So at that point you just like stop trying to impress them, right? And I thought, oh, maybe I just stopped trying and just forgot about makeup. But it really was that my skin bounced back completely from uh, microderm abrasion. If you haven't tried microderm, definitely look into it. Um, it's It was at the time just the best thing that I could have done for my skin. It's kind of like you have to floss your teeth to really get like gunk out. So it might sound abrasive, it might at the time feel abrasive and watching footage of it might look abrasive, but it's really non-invasive, like absolutely promise. I have the most sensitive skin on the planet and it totally responded to it. You can wear makeup afterwards if you want. I personally don't like to. Um, you don't break out afterwards, you know, I wasn't even red, so that's a damn miracle. That is a combination of microdermabrasion and glycolic acid. Um, the word acid used to freak me out as well because sensitive skin plus acid just sounds gnarly as. Um, but glycolic acid uh, is just like the one product that thoroughly cleaned my skin, did not make me break out. Um, my skincare clinic, again, gave me a little bottle of it like way back when I first started going there because my acne was terrible. And um, word of advice, do not be freaked out by the word glycolic acid. If that is an ingredient in your stuff, it's great. The Hydroderm included that as well as hyaluronic acid. And I was like, shut up and take my money. Um, kind of at the age now where like I need to just throw science at my face. So a remedial facial sounds really good, but um, I kind of really need to go to like an acne specialist and just get something that's scientific, that's clinical, that, that will work. So those three things combined make this whole pampering session like just a trifecta of like exfoliation and 
hydration, ultimately just rejuvenation and just amazing for your skin cell turnover. So you've got the microderm there that's turning everything over. Like I said, you force your teeth to like really get into the grooves of your teeth for a thorough clean or you go to the dentist for a thorough clean. So it makes sense that you go to a professional to really just like strip your epidermis in like the gentlest way possible and just start again. So it starts off with a double cleanse. Then they move into the hydroderm abrasion, which is like microderm abrasion using glycolic acid infusion. And that gets rid of all dirt and all dry skin cells that are just sitting on your skin. And that is like a diamond head crystal exfoliator uh, attached to like a suction machine as well. It removes all the dirt and all the dry skin cells that have just like built up on your face. So it blasts the skin like on the deepest level ever into your pores with the glycolic acid. The second step is the high, I can't say this right, hyaluronic acid infusion. And that hydrates, calms and soothes and just plumps the shit out of your face. So you just come out looking so like hydrated and bright and just supple as, obviously. It's just the best like regenerative brightening and hydrating procedure that I've had. Um, I want to afford it every four weeks. That's like recommended for like upkeep but I definitely will be getting it like at least every six months. It's honestly amazing. I know that I'm not gonna break out afterwards just based on how I feel and how I look. Um, I don't feel or look too red. Definitely feel better than I look, but ain't that just live. Anyways, Hydroderm Abrasion, check it out. Um, if you're in Australia, check out the Clear Skincare Clinics. They do the best stuff. I didn't want to wear makeup this weekend at all so I wanted to take you through sort of like what I do to my skin as a bit of like a, a genuine no makeup routine. It's not a no makeup look where you're throwing like a thousand actual makeup products at your skin which I hate. Um, it's legitimately what I do when I wear no makeup. I think I talked about this in the last video actually, uh, witch hazel toner. You can get it at any chemist and pretty much any supermarket for cheap. It's plant derived. It's honestly like most models like secrets. Trust me, I've done a lot of research and it's gentle. Um, I've never felt so clean. This part is kind of like when you wash your mouth out with like hectic Listerine. It just feels so good. So I watched a video on how to apply toner properly to the skin and apparently whatever you're putting it on with, you pad into the skin like quite firmly. You don't like drag. Uh, don't ask me why, but it was a very experienced French facialist, and I'm not going to argue with that. So this is sort of my routine actually every day and night. I turn twice a day. I don't know if that's the recommended dosage, but whatever. Um, and definitely when I don't want to wear makeup, this is how I prep my skin. To go out and face the world. And repel even more men. So toner shrinks pores, it minimizes their visibility, um, and it also preps the skin for the next thing that you're going to throw at it. I'm acting like I knew that I definitely didn't until last night when I watched a YouTube video. The next thing I do to just calm my face, because it is always red, uh, that's partly the reason why I end up just putting a ton of concealer on, which I don't want to do today. Um, Mario Badesco has got a few sprays out there that I've tried before. Um, they're cruelty free and they're paraben free, but there's still a lot of shit I can't really pronounce on the bottle, which I absolutely hate. Um, doesn't make me break out and I am seeing results so I'm sticking with it but if you guys know of any like rose water or lavender or any sort of calming mist that doesn't have a ton of stuff in it let me know and I just go to town on that I don't know if you can hear my wrist clicking but my body is going through this thing where it's just I'm like a fucking click beetle a hundred years old Ugh. okay that's relatively dry 
The next step is a natural highlight. So most of you know that Cora is like my favorite thing on earth, Miranda Kerr's label. Um, not because it's gimmicky at all, but her ingredients are amazing. They're certified organic, they're cruelty free. So everything is vegan. Um, and they're primarily made of that noni shit that she always goes on about. It's like the noni fruit. It's like a super fruit. Um, it's the base of really all her products. And I have been using Cora since I was, I think, 21. And I absolutely swear by it. They're so gentle. This is the Noni Glow Face Balm, and I feel like it's just one of those ingenious products. It's travel sized, it's not liquidy, um, and it honestly just gives you the best glow ever. So you put it on as you would a highlighter, and I just sort of dab it in. It is quite thick, but at the same time, it's so super breathable. Um, I think Miranda puts it on her eyebrows, so I'm going to do that. Um, I guess there is where you put highlighter on too. Maybe on Cupid's bow. Why not? I honestly just can't get enough of this shit. I usually put it on all my face, like at night. Um, I also work full time in an air conditioned um, office. So I like sort of having it as a bit of a mask during the day. Um, and then sort of, actually I'll do that now. I'm super dry, like under my nose. So I do that. I don't know if this light is doing too much justice, but you can kind of tell like in photos as well. I'm gonna put more on. I just want to look like a Christmas ornament, you know? I was hoping to look slightly better, but I still look like I'm sick. Um, I guess the last step, I wish there were more because I still feel like I look like the Crypt Keeper. Wild skincare that are also organic. Um, I love all her stuff, which I'll actually talk about in a minute because it's part of my new skincare routine. But in terms of the no makeup routine, um, her Power Balm is just beautiful. It's got the nicest ingredients in it. Um, lavender essential oil, avocado oil and cacao butter and it's just beautiful i just realized that i'm talking to myself through the camera instead of you guys so there you have it i'm still super red but i really just have to deal with that and it's my own choice i'm going out with no makeup i have no one to impress and i'm also trying really hard to be comfortable in my own skin at the moment so feel like the more physically vulnerable I am the more I can like really accept myself so hopefully the next time I have a full face of makeup on I don't hate myself so I totally know I'm doing this uh quite backwards I'll show you what I use in the shower before I do a routine like this to go out this might seem gimmicky and like a paid post it's not but I also want to shout out to Lush Cosmetics who let me take home four amazing uh, new products that they launched the other day. I had a media event, you should check it out on my Instagram. I take my makeup off with this oil face cleanser from Wild, which I'll either get Alex who started the company or myself to do in a follow-up video. Now many people know how to do an oil face cleanser, but anyways, this melts away your makeup amazingly. Then in the shower, I double cleanse with Cora Organics um gentle cleanser this is for sensitive skin it's in the middle of um foaming and milky so it's just a really sort of like buttery consistency that um it does not dry at all does not feel thick um it kind of feels almost like a coconut oil it's just the best most buttery beautiful consistency um, and I really do think that my skin's cleared up because of it. I exfoliate twice a week and how I do that is with the turmeric brightening mask from Cora Organics. So on a weekend, like probably later on today, I will do it as a mask like it's supposed to be used as. Um, but I keep it in the shower during the week. Um, after I've cleansed with my Cora, I quickly do like an exfoliating with water while I'm in the shower with it. It's not really supposed to be used like that but um i'm inventive as and i thought why not it's really working for me so 
I exfoliate with it, but leave it on for like a minute or so and then take it off. And it honestly is the most refreshing thing I have ever used on my skin. And I'm just reading at the moment about switching up your stuff. So switching up your shampoo and conditioner that you're using or switching up your skincare products that you're using so your skin doesn't get dependent on something. Uh, it's working well for me. I thought it would honestly aggravate my skin more, but I think because I have certified organic products, it's not really doing worse for my skin. Um, it really is only doing better. So this sugar jojoba scrub from Wild Skincare is something that I alternate my Cora turmeric scrub with. Oh gosh, I really wish you guys could smell that. It's like sugary, lemony. Mm. And then lastly, after my rose spray from Mario Badesco that I just showed you, I do the facial oil from Wild Skin Care before I use my roller, which I showed you guys how to use in the last video. Uh, not that it's super hard. If you stuck with me that whole time, thanks for watching.